Football combined with Andy Schaefer is helping Kiwi become a more independent individual. He is overcoming an obstacle instead of letting it define him. Here at the South Carolina State Fair, there are 70 rides. And this ride that I'm at is called the Starship. And this type of ride has been around since the 80s. At the corner of Huge and Gervais Street is where the Too Fat to Fly truck is usually located. At the Autism Academy of South Carolina, children like Ryan are able to get the care that they need. It's cameras like these that Olympia Mills is planning on putting around their apartment complex. I reached out to them several times, but they refused to speak on camera. USCPD is no longer investigating the case, but the Columbia Police Department has now taken on the investigation. These stands started to clear in williams Bryce on Saturday night because of the cold temperatures and because some students were just done with the Gamecocks. So no one can drive it if not. Blake Babbitt moved into Olympia this year and was shocked when thieves started targeting the complex. He has had two mopeds stolen in the past two months, and he says he always locked them to the moped rack. Well, it's pretty much just like this, and you can turn the steering wheel and lock it if you have it faced a certain way so no one can drive it if not. And I did that, and I just came out the next morning, and this was cut. Babbitt says he reported the theft to Columbia Police, who responded immediately, but no arrests have been made. Sometimes college students might be an easy target because a bad guy may think they're not going to take these certain security steps. Columbia Police spokeswoman Jennifer Timmons says there has been an uptick of crime at the complex. Moped thefts. We've had 10 since August the 1st until November 6th of this year. We've also had one reported armed robbery and three reported burglaries. I feel like anyone can just walk in through the doors down there. Um, they're usually propped open, so I would like to see security a little more strict. Alex Dorian lives in Olympia, and he says thieves broke into his apartment three weeks ago and stole his computer equipment. I feel like cameras and signs saying that there are cameras would be a huge deterrent to people who are trying to uh, harm students that live here. Timmons said police have encouraged the complex to install cameras in the parking lots, like the one at the entrance. The video does not lie. We have been very successful here at the Columbia Police Department with reviewing surveillance video. It's cameras like these that Olympia Mills is planning on putting around their apartment complex. I reached out to them several times, but they refused to speak on camera. But they did say that they plan on tightening up security by hiring an extra security guard and adding spotlights to the parking lots to keep their residents safe. Dorian and Babbitt are looking forward to the new security measures, but well, Babbitt says like he doesn't plan to buy a third moped anytime soon. Uh, Rachel so no Tripp, Carolina not. News. Applause and cheers filled the room after November 4th selection when Tim Scott became the first African-American senator in the South since Reconstruction. Since his big win, he has had a busy schedule. I caught up with him at a Hardyville Town Council meeting to see what being elected means to him. That here I sit before you as a United States senator elected by the people of South Carolina. I think it says a lot about the people of South Carolina, not that they chose me, but that they have aligned their values and their issues and made those priority in making their decisions and electing people and not the complexion. Scott grew up in North Charleston, and he says the state has come a long way since his grandfather's generation. Someone who uh, grew up in the deep south in a segregated world where he was picking cotton as a kid, that in one lifetime you can go from cotton to Congress. That is remarkable. Scott began his political career in 1996 on the Charleston County Council. Then in 2009, he made it all the way here to the South Carolina State House as a member of the South Carolina General Assembly. In 2010, he became a congressman. Then in 2013, he was appointed by Governor Nikki Haley to fill Jim DeMint's U.S. Senate seat. He is one of two African Americans serving in the Senate and the first African American to be elected to both the House and the Senate.
that's sort of the interesting period we're in, is that we'll see candidates from different ethnic and racial backgrounds on both sides of the party lines, uh, where party will matter most in some regards, uh, and it won't be simply the question of, uh, and, and not that it ever has been, but it won't be simply a question of people voting because of race, but that, that ideology matters too. USC political science professor Todd Shaw says Tim Scott was a great test on whether or not race matters in politics. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pete. On election night, Scott tweeted, much, Our values and issues are central. The most important things we have to offer are on the inside. His focus is developing an opportunity agenda to help future generations succeed through education. What can we do to make sure that other kids growing up in single parent households like I did, living in poverty as I did, how can we make sure that the American dream is accessible, reachable for those kids? He wants children to have opportunities to reach their goals and beat the odds, just like he did. To represent the greatest state in the nation in the United States Senate, it is an amazing honor afforded to me by you. Rachel Tripp, Carolina News. <laughs> Leroy Dixon is one of the fastest men in the world and is a student at the University of South Carolina. Dixon's speed in the 4x4 100 meter run sent him all the way to the 2012 Olympics and now he is back to finish his education. He began training for the 100 meter event for the 2007 World Championship. And in eight short months, won a gold medal. Um, I just treated it like it was just a normal track meet. Um, I just talked to a lot of people, uh, had a lot of fun. We uh, did a lot of shopping and, you know, met a lot of different athletes in different countries. And Dixon knew he was destined to be a runner. I think my dad put the spirit into me when I was younger. So he put that spirit into me to be a champion, so I think um, it became my destiny. He says his running career began outside of the track in his hometown of South Bend, Indiana. So they used to let me run in the grass um, on the side of the track meet when everyone else was in the race. On the track, I was in the grass and I would just race all the big kids. Right here on this track is where Leroy Dixon started his college career from 2004 until 2006. In 2006, he became pro and signed with Nike, but it was here at the University of South Carolina where coaches noticed his talent and knew he was destined for success. Choosing USC, I think that I looked up Coach Fry and he was like, he had so many Olympians and he was producing professional athletes and that's what I wanted to do, so. Dixon has lived the dream, traveled the world to run, and is the last man to anchor a USA team in a major championship in the 100 meter dash. So track and field is a is, is an incredible sport for the whole world. Uh, and so Leroy had a chance to be in the number one sport in the world and be on the number one team in the world. And I had a chance to be the coach of a kid that was on the number one team in the world. Curtis Fry is the track and field coach at USC and says that Dixon is a true champion because he has returned to finish his education and get a degree in criminal justice. Like athletics puts him in a position to do academics, to go to college. Fry and Dixon believe that getting an education is necessary for an athlete's career. When I have kids one day, I don't want to just tell them that, you know, I went to college but I didn't finish. You know, I want to at least say I have a college degree. He says he returned to USC after the Olympics because it was a part of the process that his father set out for him when he was a child. It was part of the stepping stone of me becoming a champion. And in December, he will cross the finish line and receive his diploma. Rachel Tripp, Carolina News.